Okay, so here is the um, driver board with all the pins connected to the um, power board. Okay, it's not super easy to remove, which is a good thing because we want a very good connection between these two boards. Okay. Just want to make sure that everything is connected. So this particular solder connection is not that great. So we're gonna redo it, or rather reinforce it. And that's where a more powerful um, soldering gun would actually help a lot. You might want to solder the uh, PFC chip first if you have a PFC kit, because after you place all the components around it, it will actually not be easy. So um, let's do that one first. Okay, so now everything is placed, all the components are placed, um, and their leads are bent on the back so that they don't fall out, so it can turn over and solder. So this is what we're gonna do next, and this is gonna complete uh, this board. Fully completed board here. This is a driver board, got all the connectors. All the p um, all the pieces, all the components. Um, so let's just uh, briefly go through what's going on here on the board. So these are the connectors to the IGBTs, as we mentioned. These bricks here, the black ones, are the uh, DC DC converters. They convert from uh, 12 volt single uh, supply to uh, dual supply plus minus 15 volts. This is the type of supply needed for IGBT drivers and for these um, ISO 124 chips um, that are used to um, isolate the analog voltage. Um, one of these chips um, works for mains voltage um, or the input voltage from the AC mains, AC line, and another chip works on the battery voltage. So what they do, they isolate the high voltage circuitry from the control circuitry from the Arduino so that there is no common uh, line between the two. These two chips are the A3120 uh, IGBT drivers and they drive the IGBTs through this, uh, these resistors. These are 10 ohm uh, non-inductive wire wound resistors um, with special winding methodology. Um, they're rated for 3 watts each um, and this is sufficient for uh, the operation here. This little chip here, the only surface mount component, is a PFC chip. It operates at 22 kilohertz and shapes the input current so that to the AC mains, the charger looks like a resistor. Uh, this is actually a requirement in many countries um, for connection of your equipment to the AC mains. In the US, the regulations are a little bit lenient, um, so a lot of people use non-PFC units. This circuitry here, all these resistors, capacitors, and so forth, are is supporting circuitry for the PFC chip. And this is about it, actually. Um, there are a couple of voltage, resist, uh, voltage dividers here that work uh, to reduce the input and output voltage from hundreds of volts to a few volts um, that then get fed into these chips and these chips output the signal into this connector here. The next connector over is the input PWM from the control board for this stage here, for this IGBT driver. This is the output IGBT driver, this is the PFC IGBT driver. Finally, this connector is for power, uh, plus 12 volts to go in. Uh, this has to be 12 volts or close to that, not more than 13. Um, and usually you would just uh, connect the um, uh, included AC adapter, the 12 volt adapter to this. And we'll explain that later. And we already talked about this connector here. And this is the uh, driver board fully connected to the power board. Remember this connector? It goes right in. And now this is actually fully ready to be powered up. 
is just not going to output much because there is no control uh, for the output stage. But uh, if I plug in this unit right now with an inductor on the PFC stage, it will actually produce uh, about 375 volts uh, from the mains um, up to 12 kilowatts. Uh, but there is again not going to be any control over it, so that's why we're building a control board next. Okay, looking good.